E. coli remains a very common chassis for synthetic biology experiments and in industrial production. It is also a workhorse for basic genetic manipulations even when the target organism is something different. Thus it is important to know some things about this species. The most common laboratory strains in use today are derivatives of an ancestral E. coli isolate named MG1655. The name W3110 refers to an almost identical organism. This strain of E. coli is often referred to as K12, which is its serotype, which we'll come back to later. There are various E. coli strains that are not in this lineage and still in common use. For example, BL21 is used extensively in industry and in the wet lab for protein overexpression. It is an E. coli B serotype strain, is of a distinct lineage from K12 strains, and has significant genetic and biochemical differences. E. coli W strains are also found in industry and some of the commercially available competent cell products. However, the extreme majority of E. coli strains in common use today are MG1655 derivatives. The book E. coli and Salmonella Cellular and Molecular Biology is a large two-volume rundown of all the biology of these two species. Another great book describing all the gory details of enterobacterial biology is Bacterial and Bacteriophage Genetics. In the big tree of life, E. coli lives within the bacterial kingdom amongst the gamma proteobacteria. Inside the gamma proteobacteria, E. coli is part of the enterobacteria family, which is composed of various other genuses, including Salmonella and Shigella. Since these organisms reproduce asexually, speaking of species and genuses is a fuzzy concept, and in practice, specific strains within these species are often as similar to those in other species as they are to one another. For example, some strains of Shigella and Escherichia differ only by a few specific genes. The enterobacteria include primarily organisms that reside in the guts of animals, hence the name, and as such some of them are commensal and some of them are pathogenic. You have likely encountered the Salmonella genus in the context of contaminated chicken and eggs. One specific clade of strains, Salmonella typhi, refers to the multiple specific strains that are genetically similar but not identical. They are defined by their ability to cause typhoid fever. Salmonella typhimurium strain LT2 is a somewhat common lab strain which can cause diarrhea in humans and can kill mice. In terms of severity and risk, it is a wildly different scenario to work with typhimurium versus typhi. And similarly, to work with E. coli is far lower risk. Additionally, in this clade are some well-known pathogens such as Yersinia pestis. Despite the presence of some notorious pathogens, most enterobacterial strains just hang out in the guts of animals and are part of the ubiquitous and healthy flora that exist in most animals. Thus, pathogenicity is not a general property of any particular species except where the species is defined by its ability to cause an illness. Most of the prokaryotic species, including E. coli, are defined by ribosomal RNA sequence, general similarity of the entire genome sequence, and some specific assayable qualities. One of the distinctive properties that defines E. coli is the presence of lactose catabolic genes. The E. coli is the dominant facultative anaerobe of the human large intestine. There are particular strains of E. coli that can infect most areas of the human body, including brain. However, uh, this ability is specific to specific strains. The extreme majority of strains that people use in the labs today are derivatives of MG1655. E. coli strains are most often further characterized by types of virulence present in specific strains. Note that many of the strains are commensals, including the MG1655 lineage, E. coli W, and E. coli B lineages. Commensal means they persistently reside in hosts, but they do not cause any observable harm. When scientists study bacteria, they principally study those that are detrimental to human health, and thus most of the strains that have been characterized exhibit some form of harm. These different strains are further categorized by distinguishable clinical properties such as the location of the typical infection, the presence of toxins, or cross-reactivity of antibodies, and thus immunity. One you may be familiar with is the enterohemorrhagic strain of 157H7 that often infects hamburgers. A 157H7 uh, contains two different things on its surface uh, that cross-react with antibodies. 
A 157 refers to carbohydrates on the surfaces of many of these bacteria, and H7 refers to a specific cluster of genes that include a flagellum on the surface of the bacterium. Thus, these describe specific biochemical entities decorating the cell surface and are the primary sites of antibody recognition during infection. Since two strains can share O157 and H7 and still be very different at all other genetic loci, O157H7 is a pattern of commonly co-associated genetic sequences, but does not refer to any specific strain. The O157H7 strain CDC-B6914-MS1 refers to a specific strain that contains the O157H7 serotype and has a specific genetic composition.